safe with this guy? What are you going to do if he suddenly, for reasons of personal convenience, economic or otherwise, should decide to turn over your personals to the Department of Homeland Security, your personals to the FBI, your personals to other elements of the American National Security Establishment who have been involved, again, folks, in everything in the last 10 years from the USA Patriot Act to the Military Commissions Act of 2006 uh, to the NSA's uh, warrantless uh, wiretapping schemes that were exposed in the New York Times and elsewhere. Uh, and, of course, this latest stuff now with this ITRR organization, uh, in the, which is based in Philadelphia, by the way, folks. Uh, and now Ed Rendell, the former uh, mayor of Philadelphia, Zionist par excellence, and uh, currently the governor of, of uh, the state of Pennsylvania, is now backpedaling and apologizing for all of this. This is what Rents is threatening Mark Glenn with as a result of what Mark has explained on the air today. This is what Rents could conceivably use against any of you who are law-abiding populists and patriots, who are not threats to reasonable people in our society, who do not have a violent uh, orientation. Uh, you might be a conservative Catholic, a conservative Protestant Christian, uh, you might have nine kids like Mark Glenn does and be homeschooling your kids and simply wanting the federal leviathan to uh, avoid touching your family. You might simply be among those who want your government to return to its constitutional heritage and who want a manufacturing-based economy back and who want a legitimate American nationalism to be restored instead of all of this new world globalism. If that fits you, if that description that I have uh, offered on this program today fits you, you could be next. You could find yourself very much the victim of the very kinds of things that have been going on recently, in this case involving Mark Glenn and Jeff Rents. This, this is a, of frightening proportions to me in terms of the implications and is something uh, that, that we are forced to discuss uh, because of what it ultimately means to our movement. Now, that then gets into the whole question of diversion, diversion and false dialectics. We have been forced to talk about this on the air as a result of what has been happening in recent weeks and what has happened to Mark Glenn in recent days. And as I look at all of the news stories that Mark Glenn and I should be talking about today and have elected not to talk about today because it became absolutely imperative that we cover this, this whole episode is not simply an egregious threat to Mark Glenn and his family. This whole thing is not simply potentially an egregious threat to all kinds of responsible, law-abiding, decent people in our movement, but it is forcing us once again, as we have had to do in the past as it relates to dealing with some of the maladjusted personalities in our movement who have got, gotten off in all kinds of tangential directions and who have questionable methodologies, and who have very much, in my view, unstable personalities, once again, we are having to divert from discussing the biggest issues of the day in the last 24 hours to cover something like this. Absolutely. Uh, and, and the thing and, is... And, and, go ahead. Mark. Yes. Go ahead. So I was just going to say, uh, for anyone listening to my voice uh, in, in contemplating all of this, can, can you not see, can we not see what the implications are. Folks, we have known for a long time, many of us, what was happening with the pro-Zionist, pro-neoconservative element in our mainstream media. We are well aware of what this has meant in terms of the disproportionate influence that these folks have had in both of the major uh, American political parties in my lifetime. Many of us have known about this for, for years now. But in recent years, what really concerns me is that we are seeing more and more evidence that there is neoconservative infiltration of outlets and organs of opinion and organizations of influence that should be and have been assumed to be in our camp up to now. The Tea Party has been hijacked mm -hmm. by the neocons. Mm -hmm. uh, the Constitution Party has elements within it that are anything other than the Pat Buchanan, Ron Paul type of Republicans that started that party. And now what are we seeing? 
uh, we're seeing with this Jeff Rents situation yet more things emerging that suggest that even there, there's a very, very serious problem. And by the way, whatever happened to the whole business of calling up somebody who's a part of your team and saying to a Mark Glenn, you know, Mark, you're a great guy, but I think on this issue you're full of crap. Uh, whatever happened to that? And, Mark, uh, we're still friends, even though we're going to disagree with this until the cows come home, if you feel that way. Uh, Mark, I think you've done a lot of good work, but on this particular issue, I think there's a slant or an angle or an aspect of this that you haven't seen. Now, folks, in this instance, I don't happen to believe any of that. But even if I did, would I be calling up Mark Glenn? Would I be calling up any of the other people in our movement who have befriended me in the past and the present and who have supported me through all kinds of difficult situations to say, you know, I'm going to call the Federal Department of Homeland Security on you. And isn't it ironic, and I like David Duke, uh, we're not on the same page on every issue. I, by the way, have never belonged to the KKK. Uh, Dr. Duke has, and he has since repudiated that decision from years ago. I have been tarred and feathered by a, an anonymous Zionist website for merely having met with Duke one time in Texas and have, having favorably reviewed something that he had to say in one of his books. But I find it amazing that uh, Dr. Duke, who I think is a person of great integrity, uh, it has nonetheless, in serving as the intermediary for these uh, apparent threats made by Jeff Rents toward Mark Glenn and his family. Uh, it was David Duke, folks, along with James Traficant, the former Democratic uh, congressman from the state of Ohio, who went to prison unfairly for things they did not do, I believe, mm -hmm. because they were exposing what was going on in this country with the Zionist lobby. Take Dr. Duke, for example. He explains in one of his books that in the time frame where he allegedly avoided income taxes and subsequently went to the federal pen for it, that a subsequent federal investigation led by a fair-minded tax investigator who also happened to be an African-American woman, she uh, was able to substantiate the fact, and a letter was subsequently sent to David Duke to this effect, that he not only had filed a tax return in the year in question, he had overpaid his taxes. Mm -hmm. How would you like to go to the federal pen, folks, for overpaying your federal income tax? Overpaying. Now, mm -hmm. uh, I think Dr. Duke certainly would understand the implications as one who has been victimized by something that was a complete violation of his constitutional rights he, more than anyone else, I would assume, would recognize the implications of the threat that Jeff Rents has apparently made through David Duke to Mark Glenn in regard to involving Homeland Security and all of these federal agencies against a man, meaning Mark Glenn, who is an Orthodox Roman Catholic, a responsible husband and father, who has never profited in any way, shape, or form financially from any of his political activities, and who is described by people who know him who are not his friends but know the type of person that he is, as a law-abiding, honorable Catholic Christian uh, who is certainly not a subversive or a man given to violence or a person who would hurt innocent people. Uh, in any way, shape, or form, including people that he disagrees with. This is the profile of someone that Rents has said he is going to sick Homeland Security on. Uh, who's next, folks? And if you have been involved in supporting what this guy is doing in the past with the best of intentions and the best of motives, you, in fact, unwittingly could be, at some future juncture, a possible next victim. We, Let's get that out there right on the table right now. That's what we're talking about. Absolutely. Here. And you know, Mark, the thing is this. For years, I mean, look, being in this movement that we're in, 
uh, we're constantly being assailed by uh, the latest conspiracy theory involving who so and so who's actually a Zionist shield. I get these things every day. You know, do you think so and so is actually a secret agent? You know, and me and I always say no, they're not. Okay, because look, everybody's got their own way of doing things, right? I mean. Some people like ketchup on their hot dogs. Some people like mustard. Some people like mayonnaise. Okay. Uh, now Jeff Rents, you know, he has his way of doing things. I have never agreed with, you know, the UFO stuff and Bigfoot and giant lizards in human form and all the rest of that stuff. But I thought, well, you know, we'll just look the other way as far as that goes, uh, <laughs> because. He's doing good work in terms of getting the, uh, the truth out concerning uh, the Zionists and whatnot. Um, but, but this latest business of, of going down and basically allowing yourself to be used as a bullhorn for uh, propagating this, uh, this nonsense that has gotten us involved in these two wars, okay? That's a different issue altogether, okay? Like I said before, you know, everybody has their own favorite spice that they like to use when cooking, and that's fine until you start putting arsenic in there. And, and okay, once arsenic becomes that favorite spice, it's no longer a matter of taste anymore, okay, because arsenic is poison. And these lies that he is propagating uh, with regards to Islam and re with regards to Muslim and whatnot, they are poison, pure and simple. I it doesn't matter what you think about Muslims. It doesn't matter if you're one of these extremely uh, uh, orthodox, for lack of a better word, orthodox Christians where, you know, uh, all, you want, all you envision is a Christian world where everybody uh, thinks uh, and sees things the same exact way. The fact of the matter is, is that these, these Jewish elements who are dev absolutely devoted to destroying this, this civilization – they are using the anti-Islamic lies to do it. Now, you know, as I said, for years I have been approached by people saying, I think Rents is working for the other side. And I always said, no, he's not. He's a little bit kooky. Okay, obviously, you know, anybody who spends that much time in front of the mirror uh, uh, working on his hairdo, you know, like that, he's got to have some, something quirky about him. Okay, uh, but now, honestly, I have to think twice about this. Okay, and it really wasn't until you had brought this up this morning, Mark, when you said, "Well, if this man would do this to you over a disagreement that you, the two of you have a philosophical disagreement, what would ha what would he be willing to do if the authorities came down on him and they said, "Listen, we want to see your email records. We want to see, uh, you know, uh, we want to look through your database of people who contribute to you financially and people who." Uh, write for your website and all the rest of it. If he would be willing to do this to me, right, a man with nine children at home. Well, l let me put this into perspective for you, Mark, as one who in the Catholic tradition understands the notion of confessional seal. Uh, traditional high church uh, Lutherans understand this as well. People tell me all kinds of things as a Lutheran pastor in that context things that they've done, weaknesses that they have, things going on in their family that, uh, if it ever got out, would be devastating to them. Some years ago, a person who had told me a great deal about their situation uh, later went off the deep end and had all kinds of problems. And at one point, I got a phone call from this person. This is years ago now. And they said, well, with all of my present problems, I suppose that you know you're gonna you you've you know you you've got the ability to to um, bring all of this other stuff to the fore that I shared with you in order to completely finish me off. And my response was, you know, I have to confess, since we're being frank with one another, that I think you're a jerk. But being a jerk does not give me the right, as an ethical person or as a Lutheran pastor with a confessional seal, to ever divulged the things that you have shared with me as your former pastor. Uh, that is immoral. That is evil. Uh, that is a violation of everything that I claim to represent and hopefully do represent. And therefore, you can rest easy. That will never happen. You trusted me as a Lutheran pastor. The fact that I now believe you to be a jerk has nothing to do 
with the issue of what my responsibility is to you and to the confessions of my church that I claim to uphold. A different version, but at the same time a very identical version of this, is, I think, what we're now dealing with.